This podcast is brought to you by Ride IQ. Ride IQ is a first of its kind equestrian coaching platform that will transform your independent schooling rides. Ride IQ members get access to the private mobile app with hundreds of on demand listen while you ride audio lessons taught by the world's top eventing, hunter jumper, and dressage coaches. Membership is only $29.99 per month, and every membership automatically includes a free trial. When you sign up at ride-iq.com. On today's episode of In Stride, Sinead interviews Lauren Nicholson, formerly Lauren Kiefer. Lauren was a member of the U.S. eventing team at the 2016 Olympic Games with the Dutch warm blood mare Veronica. She was also on the team at the 2018 FEI World Equestrian Games with her Anglo-Arabian gelding Vermiculus. In 2015, Lauren won team gold at the Pan Am Games in Toronto, riding Meadowbrook Scarlet. Lauren has had several top 10 finishes at the five-star level, including finishing second at the Kentucky three-day event in both 2014 and 2016, riding Veronica. Today, Sinead and Lauren discuss celebrating each horse's unique aptitude. We hope you enjoy this episode. Hello, everyone. Hello, Lauren. Hello. Hello. Uh, I'm really excited that I finally got you on this show. Um, we are mid-season down here in Ocala, so chasing all of you people that are out and about competing is is half the battle. So thank you for um, not going to Rocking Horse today. <laughs> <laughs> Just for you, I, I skipped know. Sunday of Rocking Horse. <laughs> I know that was a hard decision. <laughs> yeah, twist my arm. <laughs> yeah, you're like, I would really like to drive through um, the National Park one more time. Groundhog uh, Day. <laughs> yeah. Um, but what I really wanted to, you know, I was kind of back and forth about a couple of different things that we can chat about because there's a lot of different directions we could go. But um, I think one of the things that a lot of our listeners would really um, resonate with is a lot of the horses that you've taken through the levels, everywhere from novice to training to five star, you've actually <laughs> produced um <laughs> and dogs. Um, we, we've had a lot of guest dogs on the show as well. Yeah, I can imagine. They have stuff to say. Um, have you produced yourself? Like you, you know, they've been they've been homebreds by Miss Mars, or they've been babies that have come to you, or relatives of previous five star horses like um, Bug. And you know, I think one of the things that um, I would be really interested in hearing, and I'm sure a lot of our people would be too, is, is figuring out what separates the ones that are, you feel like are going to go to the top and then the ones that you feel like maybe need a different path. Um, right. and, and I know that that is going to be a long conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think it was no. easy to figure <laughs> out, uh, everybody would have by now at this point, but you know, it's certainly, I mean, I, I, I kind of got the reputation for producing young horses through necessity. Um, you know, uh, I couldn't afford going horses. I didn't have a lot of owners. And so the opportunity to ride horses usually came from uh, breeders with young horses, or that's what I could afford. Like that's how um, Vermiculus came about is I didn't have any horses and he was even kind of a, I bought him for like four or 5,000. Even he was a bit of a community project. I think Max Corker pitched him 500 bucks. Christiana Hober <laughs> pitched him 500 bucks. So he yeah. was a bit of a collective, um, but yeah, so. Well, I let's back up. This... Well, I'm going to stop you because let's back <laughs> up a little bit from there. So when I first met you, you had just come to David and Karen's and you're a little baby child. You were like, how old were you when you came there? 17. 17. And that's when you had snooze alarm. Is yes. that right? I had snooze alarm and Wilson. Wilson. Right. Uh, Wilson. Wilson. Um, Speaking of one that alarm. had a lot of heart. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and not Speaking always the height. Of, <laughs> bless him. God love him. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, like snooze, I had gotten him. He had come to the barn I was uh, working at after school when he was three and uh, I begged my dad to get him because obviously a 13, 14 year old kid needs a three year old 
yes. Anglo Arabian, but um, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, uh, everything happens for a reason. Um, and he, the reason I ended up at the O'Connors was actually because I had a bunch of falls from him and broke my back. And my parents asked if I was scared, and I said no. They said that if you're too stupid to go scared, be scared. <laughs> that you need to go get professional help. So that's actually how I ended up at the O'Connors. And anyway, not a psychiatrist. So everything, yeah. <laughs> So everything happens for a reason, but, um, (laughs) funny. I didn't actually realize that. I don't think (laughs) Yeah, I thought you just met them at a clinic or maybe you did. The the clinic was because I was stupid. Your parents were like, you need help. (laughs) Our child needs help. Yeah, yeah, basically, (laughs) basically. So, uh, back on track, um, (laughs) The, you know, I, I got a reputation for doing young horses because that's what I had and did. And then um, I also kind of discovered I do quite like producing young horses. And then through trial and error, I've kind of realized it's definitely the route I prefer to go to get a five-star horse. Um, and I think, you know, it's starting to show in st- statistics also that you know the horses that win five stars and medals uh nine times out of ten have been with the rider since they were young yeah um i think in our sport that's just kind of the way you have to go if you want to be competitive in the end yeah but um you know having done that with the young horses it's it's next to impossible to tell which ones are going to be a five-star horse i have to say the majority of the ones that I would have told you there's no way it will be a five star horse R one and yeah. the majority of the ones that I was like this is definitely gonna be a five star horse aren't. In the end, it always comes down to the personality. And you know, it's an annoying saying that you don't know if they're five star horse till they finish a five star, but it is I think that was the, their second five star. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You don't know until they do the second one. A lot of times yeah. they do the first one and then the second they're like, and they're like, no, <laughs> no, no, that was no, a no. terrible decision. That was awful. <laughs> and I do think like really, really good people can pick out horses from just their abilities and turn them into three and four star horses, but when it comes to five star like they they just it has to be a personality trait at that point yeah um but you know saying that i i was more often not in the beginning too slow to decide that wasn't gonna be a horse's career path um miss myers can certainly attest to that the number of times she kind of tried to gently push me towards moving a horse on and i was bound and determined not to really Uh, was more often oh yeah i mean she was always she she's very good at uh giving you the benefit of the doubt and there were a couple of horses along the way that she was like you know maybe we start thinking a second career for this one and I, no 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 just give me one more season uh like kozima was one example that was a right. really lovely mare that won a few advances and everything else but in the end she was a bit too careful but she went on and um you know, Miss Mars gave me one, you know, Miss Mars was like, I think it's time she knew. And I was, was like, give me one more season. Mm-hmm. But she went on and actually had a great career with Jackie Brooks students being a Grand Prix dress out horse. But right. that being said, um, to me, from a, if they've got the soundness and the ability, then it comes down to whether they have the personality for it or not. Mm-hmm. And I've gotten a lot quicker at recognizing that I think and I think one thing I it's really important is I try to give them the skills and tools that they'll be super useful to someone because then you know they're always gonna have a good life you know like I I hate seeing horses that are so impossibly quirky that no one else can do anything with them because yeah they kind of got made that way you know Mm -hmm. horses can be five-star horses or them horses and not be unmanageable so i try to in the back of my mind as i'm producing them not knowing which way their career is going to go is try to make them so they have the tools that they can go do a job for a lot of people and Um, has that been one of the things that you figured through trial and error or is that like um, a little bit well i mean you know david i I don't think I would have been allowed to not make them. <laughs> yeah. make them yeah. That's true. That's true. I think I would have been, yeah. I mean, he since we're all on the same farm, yeah. I couldn't really get away with not yeah. making them 
uh, have lots of tools and be rideable yeah. and manageable or he would have come after me. But yeah, uh, it's also the right thing to do. And so I have been very, very fortunate. Uh, touch wood, all the horses we've kind of sold on to different careers have been super, super successful with who they've gone to. Um, I mean, most recently, Hendine is a good example. We bought her as a five-year-old um, over in England from Mike and Emma Winter. Just beautiful, mm-hmm. beautiful mare. Had a lot of success on her um, through prelim. Uh, she like won everything. She's super successful. But I knew that she wasn't going to have the gallop to be a five-star horse. Mm-hmm. And it was really hard on her body to try to make her gallop like that. So we, you know, discussed it. And Miss Martin and I decided to sell her. And she's out cruising around with a really, really lovely woman, Claire Vanderbilt, and making each other's dreams come true. Yeah. At, you know, training and modifying stuff. And they've been super successful. And the mayor's super happy, thrilled to be doing that. So, you know, it's that's once once and I don't regret that decision, you know. And even if the mayor had, she did have this, the scope and the guts, but it was going to be so hard on her body in the long term to try to make her five-star horse with the amount of galloping and training and everything else. And so yeah. in the end, do you really want to put a horse through that to maybe get one done right. or give it a career that <clears throat> it can have a really long, super successful one? Yeah, I think that's probably, you know, one of the one of the things that again a lot of our our listeners and anybody that's really involved with the horses is that it's like it's so we get so in our heads and so in our perspective and so with our goals and that if we can switch that sometimes to the horse's perspective and think are we actually doing the right thing? You know, like are we actually putting them in a situation and that's where I kind of you know, I wrote down in talking about this, this interview with you, like it's a, you know, you and I grew up in a lot of the same program and we just heard over and over rider responsibilities. And that, that idea was attached to a skill set. but there's a whole list of rider responsibilities that are attached to the decisions that we put ourselves in to make for these horses, right? Like what, what's yeah. their job going to be? Where are they going to go? And did their goals and their abilities and their aptitudes align with ours? Yes. Um, yes. And, and trying to figure that out. And I think, you know, there, there's a few, you know, not everybody um, is going to go to a five star, but there are certainly, mm-hmm. and I'm sure you've been in this situation with teaching and clinics and things like that, where, you know, somebody comes in and they've got these goals that are over here and a horse that's over here. And you're trying to kind of bridge this thing together. Mm-hmm. And it comes down to, there is like a real emotional connection, but it's hard to make a decision that maybe the goals are separate. <laughs> yeah. They're not quite achievable, you know, like trying to figure and, out the, the personality that works for what your goal is. Yeah. And deciding if it's, <clears throat> you need the, the roads aren't meeting because you need to learn new skills to meet the horse there, or right. is it just not a good match no matter how many skills you learn? Yeah. You know, I think that you come, you know, I'm sure you at, got to that point at some point too that you suddenly realize because you spend so much of your career going you know you get a new horse or find a horse or whatever and you want to when you're a professional you want to learn how to ride and be competitive on that horse and then Mm -hmm. you get to point in your career you're like well actually I don't like that type of horse like I don't want to learn (laughs) to ride that type of horse because I (laughs) actually am good at and do quite well with the different type of horse so I think there's also you know, there's that point where you have to say, do I need to learn it or do I just need to recognize what I, I'm good at yeah, and yeah. can be successful with a horse that's that type? It's so funny. I had, um, there was, we had a clinic over here a couple of weeks ago and there was a girl here that's a great, she's a great girl and um, event rider and whatnot. And she brought a horse that was a bit tricky. And, um, you know, I watched the horse for a couple of days and, and because in my head, like, yeah, I completely agree. There was a point, you know, and it's a couple of years ago, honestly, it was, I came late to it where I kind of got over myself a little bit and just recognized some personalities that I just wasn't going to get on with. No, I ain't. <laughs> and, yeah, I'm like, this, I would not marry this person. Like, I just wouldn't. Yeah. And, um, and, and, and you know what helps are conversations like these because 
it, it, you know, it, I had heard some things about some horses that were in and out of Ingrid Klimka's barn that she just, for two days, she, if she, if she didn't like them or she didn't have an emotional connection, they were out and, Got you know, busy mad and the same thing. Like the horses all had to have this want to do the job. There was nothing that was tricky mm-hmm. that came in. And, um, you know, and so that, that realization a couple of years ago, I kind of came to, and now to me, I don't have an emotional attachment to it. And the girl was here and I watched her horse go and, it, you know, and it got better, but it was tricky. And I just said to her, I said, yeah, I like, if that was my horse, I just would sell it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and like, and she, yeah, she kind of took a step back. She's like, well, I'm not quite ready to give up on it yet. I'm, and, not, <laughs> I'm not quite to that point. Yeah. And I was we like, need a oh. few steps. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> like, I'm well, so we can sorry. work on things. I know. And you're like, you know, somebody coming up and introducing you to their boyfriend, you'd be like, I would not marry that <laughs> guy. <laughs> I was like, I need to taper that down. I was backtracking quite a bit. I'm like, I, oh, I know. I mean, I don't know anything. I've just had a horse or two that, you know, I spent yeah. a lot of time. And that's a good point too. It's like there's the other side of it is how many times have we gone to someone with a difficult horse and they've said you need to get rid of it and you haven't. It's turned out great. Totally. I mean, like I remember early on with Snooze, David got on and he goes, I wouldn't take this horse pre pre prelim. You need to sell it. And I said, and I, you know, I I was broke. It's not like I could go buy a thing. And I said, I go, but who would buy it? (laughs) That's like that's kind of all I got. Here we are. <laughs> I, was like, I mean, we kind of have to make it work because I don't have any money and totally. I don't think anybody's going to buy it. Totally. So, you know, it, yeah, like, so he went on. So, and, uh, you know, I've had a couple like that that I've brought places or even, you know, uh, Scott's not a huge fan of one of them, but he's done four or five, five stars at this point. Yeah. You know, but like, there's some that you just, sometimes you have to not listen if you do have a gut yeah. feeling. So. And I think that's probably, you know, like as long as, like you said, like you look around and you at that point have to assess your skill set, assess your community, sometimes agree to disagree and mm-hmm. say, okay, can you help me with this or not? Because this is where we're yeah. at, you know, like this yeah. is, there is something I'm going to learn from this horse. And the important thing is that the horse's confidence doesn't get shattered and nor does mine, right? Like, yeah. you know, as, yes. as a, you would kind of understand and are realistic about what the horse is or what that um, you know, what that relationship is going to look like, or the expectations are going to look like. Exactly. Um, I know <laughs> I, I had someone say to me and, uh, less than about a year or two ago with a horse, they just said, Oh, I'm just so impressed how you've stuck with that horse. And it's just changed so much. And, you know, anybody else wouldn't have done it. And I was like, well, I didn't really have an option. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, uh, you know? Well, no one else was coming or anything. Yeah. Were they? I, was like, well, maybe I would have done something, but it, but that, you know, like, like you said that I learned so much from that particular horse mm. and anyone that comes in the barn. So it's a, um, managing expectations and kind of changing your perspective sometimes is, yeah. um, it's a fine line to dance. <laughs> it is a fine line. I think line. if anything I've learned that I go, if I, in hindsight, the ones <laughs> I've stuck with too long or not, I always, if I, I had a gut instinct long before I made the decision. And I think Mm -hmm. if that's anything I've learned is your gut's probably telling you whether to stick with one or not and if it's going to pay off or not. Yeah. And to listen to that. And, and don't you think like the ones where people have kind of disagreed, sometimes your gut actually is telling you to hang on to them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like you just it's like, like yeah, you're like, I know I should right. like, I like it. this horse, but I do. But I do. <laughs> yeah. There's certainly plenty like that, that it doesn't. And I think, you know, you also have to get past the point. I think everybody goes to that part where they want to be that rider that can ride anything, you know, mm-hmm. like there's so yeah. much, you get that kind of reputation, like they can ride anything you can put her on anything and then you kind of get the point you're like i don't want to ride everything yeah. like yeah i've done i've done the fixing you know like once you've done the fixing the horses or the naughty ones or the ones nobody can do anything with and then mm-hmm. you kind of realize you know, like is it really worth as much effort as i'm putting into it yeah. versus the other opportunities available. And sometimes those ones, you know, that's the interesting thing as well, is that sometimes those ones just in a different situation or a different person or a different relationship, they thrive. thrive. Right? I mean, yeah. it's crazy, right? Like, um, yeah. we don't do a lot of sales, but it's been amazing to me sometimes when I'm like, oh, no, that horse would never get on. Will never work. And the person will come try it. And it's like, what do I Flicks. know? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, you know? exactly. It's, yeah. Especially with like little kids, you know, there's some horses. Yeah, that are they so have a generous. sense. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's just, and, and they're almost, you know, like you think, God, this horse wants to be in a situation where they're the teacher instead of mm -hmm. all the pressure all the time, you know? Mm hmm but it's and and again, if you think about it from somebody that's not a professional rider, that's even more so. It's like you're working a nine to five, you're getting to the barn before work or after work, and you know this is your you're pouring the money into it. You know, make yeah. sure that it's <laughs> that you're looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, that you're not dreading having to go do this horse at the end of the day. Totally. That's what, it's funny the amateurs I teach. You know, sometimes. Like they, it, it's such the venting reputation that everybody's tough and they ride right. in whatever weather. And, da, da, da. and I remember one time it was just horrible, gross weather and it was rocking horse or something. And she's like, I just don't really feel like going. And I was like, you do this for fun. Are you going to yeah. have fun? Nobody cares if you go. No. Like if you'd rather sit inside, I would, if I could, yeah. <laughs> if, totally. I, if this wasn't my job, I would rather sit inside on this, this nasty Sunday. Yeah, like, so would you your horse it. probably. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. If you don't feel like it, don't. If it's yeah. your, I think, you know, for the for people that have full-time jobs and this is supposed to be the fun part, they have to remember, you know, are you having fun? And yeah. is, if you're not, is it because it's not the right horse or, you know, why? Yeah. yeah. And I, that's, that's a really good point. And I think so much of that is coming, um, well, it's just becoming important again. I think it probably at one point it was important and then everything got, you know, like, again, that tough mentality and everything. So this and that and whatever. And now the whole world is shifting towards a more, um, you know, organic way of doing things and having mm -hmm. some balance and, and some happiness in what you're doing. And I think mm -hmm. the horses really obviously appreciate that. And if you can sit back and kind of, you know, we're all going to have good days and bad days, but it, it mm -hmm. should be something that you're enjoying. It should be. And yeah. even if it is a tricky horse or it's something difficult, but, but you really enjoy the problem solving part of it, then fine, yeah. you know, take it. How about it? Yeah. Don't, don't go, you know, maybe skip yeah. the competitions for a little bit and get into the training part and, and up your skill set that way. And, you know, there's so many people now too, that <clears throat> you can branch out. I was having this conversation um, with Kathy Barr, who was one of our guests. And I was asking her about some of her students. And she said the difference a little bit with the students that come to them is that um, if they, if there's a, if they have a horse that they maybe don't quite have the skill set to, to match, there's always the groundwork. There's always yeah. the round pen. So they go back to that. And then, at, and then hopefully at some point, maybe they meet the skill level and yeah. the, you know, the knowledge and that type of thing meet. And so, you know, if you can, and, and we were fortunate enough to learn um obviously in the o'connor program where we spent a lot of time in the round pen and then mm -hmm. here we've i think we've all kind of broadened our uh, community in that world a little bit but you know there's so many amazing horse people that are outside the discipline you know that are outside yes. the eventing outside you know even like wonderful yeah. horsemen like jackie brooks in the dressage amazing yeah. you know like yeah she's horsemen. incredible but no. there, you know, like if, if you can expand your community and, you know, think outside the box a little bit with some of these ones that have mm -hmm. are a little trickier and expand your skill set, whether it be in the dressage ring or the round pen or, you know, there's so much access to information online as well. It's kind of crazy. Um, yeah. I mean, it's super flooded with, um, you know, different memberships and things that you can kind of learn from and figure out. But I mean, that's part of the, obviously. The and so many even you know there's just so much more um internet learning opportunities yeah. now too i mean like you, you never could do as much as before as you can they have so many of these master class series or ride iq mm -hmm. or any of this stuff where you can get lessons and so often like i just kind of watch those things in the background and someone will just say one little thing or something and i'll be like Oh, and that kind of makes something else I've been working on fall yeah. into place or like just some people can just say things a little bit differently and can just give you an idea or a little get a little creative or something or remind you if you know something you may even know but kind of forgot. Yeah, 100%. It can kind of yeah, it keeps getting you out of bed in the morning as long as you're you know, as long as you're motivated to keep on learning. I mean, I think that's the part about being a good student. Um so when, you know, and, and that kind of goes back some like talking about, um, you know, the connection to the horses and, 
and figuring out their aptitude and their personalities. You know, having a horse that you've had in the barn for 10 years and having a horse that you've had in the barn for two months, right? Like, where does that, like, when you get a horse into the barn, <clears throat> have you kind of figured out a timeline where you go, I'm going to give it this amount of time? And, and what does that personality look like? Like, you kind of say it comes down to the personality. What does that look like <clears throat> for you? And that can be really specific uh, to you. Yeah. <laughs> um, for me, it's always like I've I if a horse has a work ethic, regardless of its abilities, like I'll commit to it for quite a long time. Like it's pretty yeah. hard for me to give up on a horse that has a really good work ethic and tries really hard. Yeah. Um, that's the one thing I've discovered. I just and that you just know they're not going to end up being good five-star horses because you can't count on the ones that don't want to show up and work every day. Yeah. And, you know, I've had, I've had several advanced horses that weren't very gifted, but they were workhorses. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I've had a few that were incredibly talented youngsters and they were worthless because they had zero work ethic. So, right. you know, when you can't count on them show up on the day or also that they just kind of fight you during the whole training process. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's really hard to say you'd put, I feel like you have a pretty good gut instinct for that pretty early on in the process. Mm -hmm. um, so it's hard to say like how long you want to devote to them. Um, yeah. You know, like I have uh, one horse, it's a good example of just needing time. And luckily um, his owner was very patient with him. Um, I'll have another Brandy Randerman owns and we bought him as a five-year-old and he was super quirky his, you know, six, seven year old year. Like he was pretty difficult and he had like very, very quirky. And my line was always as like, he's just weird enough. He's probably going to make a really good five star horse. Right. Like, and yeah. she, you know, like everybody knows. <clears throat> and, and she was super patient sticking with him because he just have stupid stuff happen. Like he'd jump anything, but a squirrel would fart and I'd fall off in the middle of the course, <laughs> you know, like yeah. things like that. And, but I had the, I was like, it's going to be a really, really good horse. I promise. Mm -hmm. Like it just, just give me the time. So that one, you know, luckily she was super patient and I had the gut instinct. I was like, it's going to be a really good horse, even though, you know, from the outside looking in, it's kind of like, why are you kind of keep going at this? Mm -hmm. Um, but then I've all I had other horses behave similar, similarly, but they had no work ethic, you know, right. like, I think that's always the, for me, the factor they can have kind of naughty quirks, but if they'll work hard, Mm -hmm. You know, like this horse, he would work hard, he'd show up every day and you could work him and work him, work him, and he would never say no to working. Mm -hmm. And then you have horses that they just get sick of being tired. You know, they don't want to be yeah. tired or they don't want to be a little sore. Or they don't want to mm -hmm. work hard through things. And to me, those are the ones that I kind of, my gut tells me aren't going to be ones I want to stick around very long. Right. Right. And when you, when you, yeah, when you talk about worth work ethic, can you talk about that a little bit more about what that kind of looks like? Um, or doesn't me, look like? <laughs> it doesn't look like. Yeah. Um, to me, it's, you know, the horse. And the, the other thing you have to, I think, through experience is whether do they not want to work because there's something physically going wrong yeah. and, or you're training them wrong. You're not giving them something to enjoy working or do they just not have a work ethic? But to me, like, it's that horse that, you know, you can be having a really hard dressage lesson and then you stop and give it a long rein to talk about it for 10 minutes and then pick the rein back up and ask to go back to work. And it's the one that, okay, we did this a long time and worked hard and I'm a little tired, but okay, we'll keep doing it. Or the mm -hmm. one that goes, Ugh, and you have to kind of convince it to get back to work. Right. Or the one, um, you know, that you are doing a half hour trot set going up the hill repeatedly. And every time you turn to go up the hill again, does it go up the hill or does it go, I want to go back to the farm? <laughs> yeah. You know, like it's just, it's yeah. those ones that, you know, you say one more, can you go one more? And they go, all right, all right. Yeah. So, you know, rather than one that you're trying to convince all the time, yeah. can you do a little more? Can you do a little more? And to be fair, like, when, you know, going back to the responsibility of that, like, if you think about, you know, I used to get weird about, you know, like, we were told, like, you're not supposed to say anthropomorphize with horses, but I think whatever, oh, right. like, you know, like, 
whatever helps you relate. So if you think about yeah. like, different people, like I've met people certainly along the way that our work ethics are very different, but it doesn't mean that to them, their threshold of their work is hard. Like what feels right. hard to them may not feel hard to me, but right. it's still really hard for them. And so yeah. if, if again, finding a job that is going to make them feel good, that's only going to be yeah. more motivating. So it's yeah. like in those situations, like, you know, I'm kind of the same. If I have one that wants to run back to the barn with me every day and I kind of gone through and gone through the, you know, the, the you've ticked all the to, boxes. Yeah. And it's yeah. still every time it wants to, you know, it's happier at the barn than it is with me at work. I'm kind of going, okay. Like you, you just know, don't I'm, like me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I, you know, maybe we can find something that you're going to excel at and then everything's yeah. going to be happier, you know? So it's yeah. like figuring out those motivations for those horses and, and it's, and it can be very discipline specific. Like there are some mm. really nice, easy jobs uh, for horses out there that can have, I, and I just sold a few lovely horses that honestly, when it came down to like with your Hindin horse, like the galloping and the really like that, mm -hmm. you know, how pumped up I had to get them to really make the yeah. time and how hard it was. And I was like, I am, no, I'm not that slow. <laughs> yeah. Like I, it shouldn't be this hard. hard. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and the horses don't quite say no, like they do the job, but it's not, you know, you're jumping around a preliminary yeah. and you're like, it takes everything in my body to get even yeah. remotely close to the time. And you're like, is this, should this be that hard right now? Yeah. And, yeah. you know, and then they, I, I had two horses like that and they just went into the hunter jumper world and are generally two ecstatic. six for the rest of their lives yeah. in perfect footing. And I'm like, I couldn't be happier, you know? Yeah. Um, that's, on Instagram that's a good all the example. Time. Yeah. <laughs> Like that's a great example. It's uh, you know, a lot of our five star horses going around and around in a hunter jumper ring would be just torture to them. Yeah. And then other words, we have a homebred and he was God love him, sweetest thing in the world, but he was so so scared. <laughs> just right. scared. And like, you know, go he tried his little heart like he tried his heart out, but then he went to um so we wanted to find him a job that made was made him mentally happier. And uh, Kim Cesare's mom took him into her lesson program, and nothing makes him happier than going around yeah. that same ring all day every day. Mm -hmm. And the students fight over him; they all love right. him. He's the most right. perfect horse. So you know the the routine of just going around that ring every day yeah. and knowing what his day makes him way Happy. happier. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's that shift, you know, if you can step back a little bit and kind of really assess the situation, which it's hard to do when you're so in it. And we're actually more for fortunate than most, because I think <clears throat> at least, you know, our experiences are spread maybe wider than a lot of people that have one horse and they're, you know, yeah. they're, they're, taking... I think that's the toughest, you know, oh, if you don't so have an another barn oh. fold to ride, like you yeah. have to make the decision and you just have the one horse and mm -hmm. you lack the kind of experience with a bunch of other horses to know yeah but my you know my recommendation that i always give to people that are a little bit struggling that way i'm like what's your gut telling you do you dread riding him every day like yeah. you shouldn't have to you know yeah. like that's that's yeah i feel like your gut's usually right and and that's also in looking around in your community like talking to your making sure your coaches and your trainers and honestly sometimes even like your vets have a better idea than you do yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. i mean you can you can go down that benedict <laughs> shush, train that dog. Shush. <laughs> oh god this is why we're trainers so <laughs> yeah um like one another tangent you could go down for days too is like whether a horse could can has all the other traits but can they physically do it you know right. like are you hammering away you know um mm -hmm. probably one people remember you remember the paint horse that's a homebred mochaccino that yeah. took through three star and i mean he had all the work ethic and scope and try but like he didn't have the greatest confirmation mm -hmm. and I mean, he was very, very stoic. He was super tough. Nothing had gone wrong. But, you know, Ms. Mars and I had a conversation and I said, he's not like, we both have been in this long enough. We know he's not going to hold up yeah. as a five, you know, for a long, long time. And so we're like, so the conversation was, all right, well, let's see if there's something else he's good at so that, you know, we can give him a long career. 
So even though he had the, so I took him fox hunting all that fall and he loved it. So mm-hmm. now he's this amazing fox hunter down at Stonehall for them. And, you know, but that was, that was, you know, the horse had the ability and the talent and the work ethic and the, you know, stoicness, but, you know, in our gut, we knew long-term yeah. at that level was going to be too hard on his body. Totally. So <clears throat> totally. And that, that is, it certainly takes some, um, long vision. I remember, I mean, this was probably 10 years ago. I ended up vetting a horse that had gone to the Pan Ams for, I don't know, like Guatemala or something, honestly. <laughs> and, uh, it was a beautiful horse. And, um, but had a lot in the action. Like it was really well put together. It was really nice. It had a lot in the action. Um, and it's the greenest thing. It would jump into the water, but it kind of would land flat footed, you know, every time. Right. And I thought that's fine. Like I'm pretty good online. I can, I'll I can, work through that. I'll work through it, but send it to the vetting. And there were some mild changes. Well, more than mild changes, but if the horse had, you know, if it moved a little better, if the water hadn't been the issue, we probably would have gone, okay, you know what, it's the, it's we within normal limits. But I, you yeah. know, looking at it, I remember having this conversation um, with my vet at the time up in New Jersey. And I'm like, I, right now, I think I'm going to have to have that horse dropping into water 10 times a week. Yeah. And is that going to be okay? That going to work. Yeah. yeah. Like, and yeah. it might be one of those horses that just has to go drop into water every Thursday yeah. before it goes and competes on Friday and Saturday, even through the advanced level, we've all had those horses that mm-hmm. they just have to go drop into water. And it was, mm-hmm. it was a really hard decision because it was something that was, it was a little bit out there to make that call, but oh, you know, yeah. you're kind of going, I know this is what this is going to look like. And I think, yeah. you know, that, that brings up a good point with when people are going shopping for horses and they're going into these vettings, which can be so, I mean, hard because the vets right now are giving you so much information it's like i mean even because they have to yeah they have to cover their butts (laughs) and they give you know and you'll you if you if you find a vet that's gonna say this horse 110 percent passes the vetting don't buy it (laughs) yeah like they're probably not a good vet or they're drunk or something (laughs) because you can't get a vet like and you know, I feel I feel like it should be more publicly known. You can't get a good vet to tell you a horse passes a vetting yeah. because they've got to cover their own butt and they can't mm-hmm. know if a horse is gonna be tough enough or not. Yeah. If you can get a vet to say, I think it's suitable for the job, then <laughs> that's yeah. about as close to an A plus as you're gonna get. Well, and that's where it comes out. I mean, when you get your vet reports, that's pretty much what it says that at this given time the mm-hmm. expectation for the horse is it's appropriate with these reservations <laughs> and normally said, exactly. you know like uh, it was, yeah I, I was vetting a horse the other day and um, my our vet was there and she said all right what's what's the um you know what's the goal of the horse what's the expectation and I go the Olympics and she goes yes. Do you want me to write that down? And I was like, please. I was like, okay. Well, it's, well, the Olympics are just are just a four star, so at least it's not for okay. <laughs> you know, but then it's like you know, the end of the vetting definitely because I had said that in the beginning. The the vet the vetting definitely said you know acceptable with expectations with within reservations. Yes, <laughs> you know? yes, they got to um, make sure to cover them both. <laughs> But it's, it's daunting. I mean, it's really, um, mm-hmm. it's hard because like you said, it comes down to the buyer to have the information. I mean, you're going to have a lot of information in front of you mm-hmm. and then to decide what can I manage? What is a deal breaker? You know, that that's a whole other podcast is to kind of deciphering yeah. these vettings. But gotcha. um, you got to have some forethought, not only to what you want to do, but again, like the horse can be well put together, but the gallop, they're hard you know, they're hard on themselves mm. in the gallop. And so mm. for that five-star horse, is that going to be okay? Or, yeah. you know, the, how the horse jumps into water, you know, take them across under school. Um, exactly. How do they feel when they yeah. land off of every jump? Yeah. And then that's going to yeah. make you feel differently about, you know, how their feet x-ray and what you're yeah. going to accept and what you're not. So it's, it is, it takes a whole, you know, I guess if it was easy, then. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> It was easy. Someone would have figured it out by now. <laughs> I know. I know. As inventors, we're just uh, we're just still trying. <laughs> Bluttons for punishment. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, another question that I had for you was, you know, when you, because <clears throat> obviously, again, you've written a lot of um, 
you know, homebreds from Miss Mars and a lot that have been bred off the property. But then you're also, you know, importing horses and trying horses all over the world, really. So, you know, it, can you explain that? Because I, I know I get that question a lot. And I think you, you mm. see it a lot. People going, well, why aren't there horses in America? And mm. I mean, obviously, the answer is somewhere in between. There are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There are horses in Europe. And yeah. Can you talk yeah. on that a little bit? Um, I'm a huge believer that we're going to kind of be, you know, when, I mean, there's a lot of things to decipher, especially right now about why we aren't competitive, uh, on the world stage to everybody's liking. But I, I do think a huge factor is until we find a way to breed our own horses yeah, or get bigger breeding programs here, you, 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 it's going to keep being a struggle because, you know, you've lived overseas too and one thing uh the riders over there they're pretty quick to just say you know they don't they don't um like you said manage things they're not mm -hmm. gonna manage things because there's 55 other horses down the street yeah that are just as talented or more talented so if they have a young horse that needs something managed they're probably not really gonna deal with it right yeah. like they're gonna move on to the next one whereas here it's really hard to find that decent five-year-old and you find that five-year-old and you've been looking for a really long time and you know, it's going to take a really long time to find another five-year-old that you think is just as nice. So then you mm -hmm. put up with a lot more stuff and manage a lot more stuff. And then you put six years into it and it's still not going to end up yeah. being what you need it to be. So, yeah. I mean, <laughs> one big factor is the quality and number of horses they have there Yeah. Um, that we don't have. Yeah. And, I mean, that's just a whole other thing you could get into. But I do think for America, there's got to be more uh, to the breeding aspect and investment in that. Um, and then, you know, for me, looking at horses overseas and stuff, I think the one thing to keep in mind, if it's being advertised, especially if you're talking, God, all the like dealers are going to kill me now. Mm -hmm. But if it's, <laughs> if, if, <laughs> but if, you know, big dealers are advertising it, it's because it's not good enough for all the people they call first, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, everybody tries to have um, contacts and such. So, you know, you've got your people that you've a little bit say, hey, if you see something that you think is the real deal, like call me and yeah. I'll either be able to get it or I won't. So if something is that nice, they've already called the, their people yeah. and if those people haven't wanted it or it's they haven't bothered mm -hmm. calling them you know i think you have to keep a little bit that level of um cynicism that doesn't mean you're yeah. gonna find a really nice horse you know i think mm -hmm. it's just you gotta have a little bit of cynicism about it when you're mm -hmm. shopping overseas and then you know i think you have to you have to either decide whether you're going to have an agent and pay them that commission because those agents especially over there they're going and looking at hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of horses to find the right ones. Or you gotta be willing to go drive around the backwoods of the yeah. Netherlands and try every random mom and pops horse they bred yeah. themselves to try to find the diamond in the rough for cheap. So you're either kind of paying for someone else has found it and made it simple for you to come try it, or you've got to spend a lot of hours on the ground. Um, yeah which Karen and I did once we spent 10 days over there. And I think I, I sat on 70 some odd horses. Oh my God. And that was what we did. We said we, we were trying random things, found random places. And, um, you know, I think four of those were ones that were good enough for the people that were looking, but I mean, that's it's after 70 it's horses, hours or like money. <laughs> You're like, I don't even know. This is, this is a cow. It's a really nice. I cow. don't even know. There were just some. There were a few I got on. I was like, get it. I don't want on. I don't want to ride. Let me off. Yeah. Let me off. Let me off. There were a few like, I don't. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. Um, but like, that's one thing. Either you're gonna have to invest hours or money. Like, that's yeah. I think you know because I I hate it when people say they're like well that's a lot for a horse i saw a horse doing that and it was like you know ten thousand dollars it's like right. well yeah but it was a random horse in idaho 
and you didn't have the convenience like you're gonna fly out there and see that random horse in idaho yeah. and like it and fly it back and that, that so i mean you can go off on a whole tangent about yeah. that but for me when i'm looking at horses you know like you said with vetting and stuff everybody's got their deal breakers for me feet are a deal breaker um mm -hmm. i think for what we want to do and we've all seen it over and over again and as many miles as at the you know top of the sport they have to take they have to have good feet yeah. and you know that's because i've had two horses break my heart they were incredible horses but couldn't hold up at the top of the sport yeah. because they didn't have yeah. enough feet even with the best barriers and everything else um and then you know like a lot of people kissing spines is a deal breaker for me it's not at all because i've actually had quite a few i mean veronica had horrible kissing spines mm -hmm. um i've had a lot of horses with kidding spines and found it super manageable so for mm -hmm. me that's not something that scares me off at all so i think it's you know depending on your experience the yeah. things that are deal breakers or not yeah. or that you think yeah. you can manage in your program yeah 100 percent. that's um uh... Yeah, I think, and, and also, like, it's not bad, I, and I've done this the past couple of times, like, I pulled my farrier in on the vetting, you know, like, yeah. You're, yeah. you're just like, can I send you these x-rays, can you, like, and can you honestly just tell me if I bring you this horse, are you going to, like, be like, oh, man, <laughs> why <laughs> did you do this Why did you do this? Yeah. I love him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, really pretty and sweet. I know, I know. Yeah. but at the yeah. end of the day, but then if it's a lower level job, and your farrier says, well, yeah, I'm just going to need this and that. Absolutely. No, no big deal. And, yeah. um, and, I, and I think that's one of the things that, you know, when you go to these vettings, you can, you can phone a friend, you know, like you can't, it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be a lot of the information is really, I mean, I like, I, I mean, I still do it. I, I call my friends and say, what would you do? Yeah. <laughs> you know, in this yeah. situation. Um, Trust the experts around you. Yeah. That, is, yeah. you know, has a little bit of history. They're going to have something. I mean, Lord yeah. knows I wouldn't pass a vetting. Um, and but, it's funny. I feel like upper level riders like yourself or myself are much more lenient on vettings. And it's yeah. always, you know, kind of the person just from lack of experience and knowledge, you know, the person who wants a horse that's going to go max training that is super anal about the vetting being perfect mm -hmm. when, you know, in reality, it's a difference. Can I, you know, I can buy tennis shoes off Amazon and not be yeah. crippled after running mile, but if you're a pro, marathon yeah. runner you're not gonna buy tissues off amazon you know like yeah, yeah, yeah. it's 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 all relative to how much gonna skill gonna is going to be required of what you're doing yeah. yeah well and that too i mean yeah it kind of figuring out again what you're what you're willing to work with i know i have a, a really great client and we've been looking for a horse for her for six months and um and she had a decent budget she has thirty thousand dollars and she um wants a horse that she can come take lessons on. Maybe she'll go beginner novice. It doesn't have to be the fanciest thing. It just needs to be kind and sound. And it's been so hard to find. And, yeah. um, and honestly, I mean, I, I think I had to apologize a few times because she'd send me stuff and I'd be like, no, 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 no. 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 <laughs> like, well, do I need more money? No, no, <laughs> you know? no. Like, it's out there. Be, it's out there. And we just, I mean, last week we found one, but we vetted two and they haven't passed the vetting. And then we've gone and looked at a bunch and I know it's been super disheartening, but mm -hmm. you know, going overseas would have just made that the budget would have been impossible. Yeah. And the country's so big and she yeah. works full time. So we can only go yeah. look at stuff on the weekends and it's just, yeah. you know, you have to go, okay, this is going to take six months, it's but can take you well. find a nice lower level horse for, you know, that price? Yes, yeah. for sure. Um, exactly. but you've got to be picky <laughs> yeah. in that, in yeah. that sense. But there were some, but it was, I, there was one horse that I, I remember I quite liked, but, and I was honestly getting to the point where I was a little bit like, Oh my God, is anything out there? And this horse could, should. And then, you know, there was some stuff on the vetting and I thought this is, this is the one horse she's going to get for the next little bit. And there are so right. many, and I didn't think the horse was in the best shape as mm -hmm. far as it being taken care of. And I didn't mm -hmm. think that I thought that, okay, we're going to go in and we can fix this, this, and this. And I think the attitude of the horse is great, but there's so many unknowns right now mm -hmm. as far as like, if the horse was in my barn, I think it would look a little bit different. Yeah. And then we'd know at least, you know, like we'd yeah. know where we we're at. And, but it's like, also you got to look at the history, you know, you got to look where yeah. you're going and then look at the history. What has this horse been doing? Has it been, yeah. has it been coping with, you know, two different feet? Yeah. 
you know, and jump for his whole life. Star, yeah. For his whole life, then fine. You know, like, yeah. okay, no big deal. Yeah. Or does it have two different feet and it doesn't look like it's been fed and it hasn't really been worked for six months? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's been yeah. staying in a field and it's yeah. not quite right. And yeah, and it, you're like, you'll never know. regret regret getting x rays and stuff too. Yeah. Like, when, especially if you're going to yeah. sell something later, because how many times have you bought something because the x rays from two years ago showed that? the 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 arthritic changes are exactly the same as two years ago as, it hasn't yeah. progressed you know like totally that's 100 percent. it's peace I mean, of mind you know you kind of go yeah. okay and it sucks up front but I, like the cheapest part the cheapest part is buying them no matter what the cost they all like they all cost exactly the same like yeah. like on a year to year i mean that's the thing that's bananas is that they all just cost exactly the same and often when you spend less and you don't bet them you spend so much more yeah, that's, um, I mean, I'm sure you <laughs> see it all the two. And I just want to scream at young professionals that get these free horses or these cheap horses yeah. and they don't, and they, and they get them as a investment essentially to sell for a profit so they can yeah. set themselves up better, but they don't vet it. And you're like, why did you vet? Well, vetting would it cost more than the horse costs. And it's like, it, it, you doesn't can't matter. get rid of it. It doesn't matter. It's like, yeah. it, you know, yeah. especially in this day and age, people are so unwilling to buy a horse without a vetting. Mm -hmm. Like you're never going to be able to make money off a resale if, mm -hmm. if it has something. No, no. And you're going to put a and lot of time and work into a it. A lot of time and money. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's definitely, it's, it's that, you know, it's, a, it's, again, it's a balance and it's being educated enough about what you're looking for. And you don't have to know, like, I mean, yeah. for, again, like you don't have to know, you just have to know somebody that knows. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? Trust, you know, surround yourself <laughs> yeah. with people smarter than you and yeah. do what they tell you. To do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like ask those, ask those people. So, you know, so breaking it down, you know, we really like, we're thinking about the, the responsibility that we have, you know, for, that horse that's going to be our, you know, that one horse, that two horses, three horses that are going to be our, you know, on our journey, whatever that journey looks like, whether it's the AECs or whether it's, you know, just going to a couple of clinics and being able to take a camp or whether that's going to the Olympics, um, you know, it's figuring out like the veterinary side of things, you know, are they able to do it? The personality, you know, like, and, and it's not just the personality of the horse, right? Like it's yeah. your relationship, your communication, like does that horse, get you out of bed in the morning yeah. um, and, and not get you out of bed because you're frustrated, but because you're interested. <laughs> you know, like, I can't sleep because I'm going to figure this out. And, um, you know, and then the responsibility for calling it what it is, you know, Call having like, a, uh, yeah, a real look at it and saying, okay, you know, there's something else out there for this horse. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's funny. It's so hard on the front end of that. And I, I'm sure you agree, like on the back end of it, when the horse has moved on and gone someplace else, like I'm always, I, I like the next day I'm fine. Like I cry with them getting mm -hmm. on the trailer and the next day I'm like, well, he's happy. Yeah. I'm happy. Let's go. Yeah. Sometimes <laughs> so that's, go. then you realize what a huge weight it was on you. Yeah. You know, you wake up and you have this huge relief that you don't have to deal with anymore. And then you realize, you know, you kind of knew yeah. in your gut all along. Totally. I, and I, it's funny because somebody said it to me the other day and it actually kind of like, I tried not to let it offend me, but it took me back because, because she said, oh, you're so lucky that you just, you know, you can just do that. You can just make that decision. And, and maybe it's just about, you know, money or something. And I was like, what? I was like, no, I didn't it, uh, like, where's all this money people are telling yeah. us about too. I was like, I don't, that wasn't <laughs> the deal. Like I, but yeah. I, I definitely, you know, have, have these goals over here. And this mm -hmm. horse was, was not living its best life here yeah right? it, like you know it was not <laughs> it's <laughs> like, not just my ambition it's their no. ambition too and the horse is way, horse you know, ambitious. yeah yeah i'm like it's way happier over here it's not mm -hmm. you know she's like well i'm just so attached to my horses i'm like girlfriend <laughs> We all are like, yeah, we're all there, but I've got a makes the, field yeah. full of horses I'm attached yeah, to. <laughs> totally. totally. And, and I can be just as attached, you know, I, it feels better when they're doing, you know, something yeah. that they love, you know, like exactly. it does feel, um, you know, less frustrating for everyone. And, and, and on the other side of that, you know, there is that skill set. and can you spend, you know, a certain amount of time going, I am going to develop a skill set because here I am lacking, you know, like, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, you and I are both, you know, riding with a, a really cool show jumper. <laughs> uh, Six, five, like, four, three, two, one. Yeah. Uh, so for those of you listening, Lauren and I have both kind of went back to the drawing board for some self 
I don't know, because <laughs> we wanted things to be harder. Um, but, uh, in, in the show jumping phases and went into a pretty difficult, and not difficult, not the right word, but like, um, I don't even know what the right word is. Like, uh, for, for me, when I went over and, and started in this new program, I'm like, gonna okay, increase I'm, technicality, raising yeah. our standard and skill set, raising there the standard. Go. There you go. I, and, and, well, and when I was kind of in like reflecting on stuff, I was like, okay, like my skill set can be better here. Like it can be better in a lot of places, but I need, I need a big something to help me yeah. really elevate here because this is where the sport's going. And I, I just feel like that's going to be a skill set that I can get. And then if I at least feel like I'm at this certain point with this skill set, then I, again, I, I have a better perspective on it, you know, is it me or mm -hmm. is it them? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. You know, which, which is kind of helpful to, or is it us, right? Like, yeah. and, um, and those are three, you know, three things. And if you feel pretty confident in your skill set, you know, it's easy to kind of then say, okay, like make I feel pretty decision. good. Yeah. It's easier to yeah. make that decision. And sometimes um, those horses come into our lives to increase our skill set in that place. Mm -hmm. And then a year later you go, okay, we are not working here, but thank God that horse came along because yeah. then I went down this road over here. Exactly. You know, which For is, sure. um, you know, I think what most of these horses, I mean, the, I, I don't, I haven't met one that's come into the barn that hasn't taught me something something yeah whether it is even if it is saying bye <laughs> <laughs> yeah even if it's saying bye is what they taught you <laughs> yeah no i know you're like i've got to figure this out um so you know are there any situations that you can and this is kind of on the spot are there any horses that you feel like you can tell us any stories about that you know the ones that you felt like were never you thought this is never going to work and they did or, or, um, you know, or the other ways where you're like, for sure, this is going to work. And it didn't, obviously you told us about the Pokemon <laughs> horse, but I actually think these stories are so, um, they just give people so much to hang on to when they're in that place trying to make yeah. choices. Yeah, that's very true. Um, I mean, I think one that is relatively well known and I miss Mars would definitely agree on as a young <laughs> horse, um, the landmarks, Monte Carlo, Patrick, uh, there was, I mean, and you were around him a lot when he was growing up too. And I mean, there was no universe you would have thought this horse would have jumped around <laughs> as many things as he's jumped around yeah. all over the world. And, you know, he's done multiple five stars and, uh, you know, badminton, Blenheim, Aachen, Bukla, you know, he's been all over the place and as a young horse and even still now, you know, you couldn't get him over a bloody rail on the ground to save your yeah. life. You know, like it, it, he was so, so he, he still hates colored rails. And if he showed up in your, yeah, he still hates them. If he showed up in your barn, you would think if I got, the, if I got the horse in for training, I'd think something horribly traumatizing and happened right. to this horse and show jumping and yeah. it hasn't, you know, we've yeah. had him his entire life and he is from day one of getting broke has hated colored rails or any well, of good that. thing all so, of the show jumping rails aren't <laughs> all of the show jumping rails <laughs> so you know and he's funny like as we went on with him you know he just kind of kept going up the levels and he still just kind of kept doing stuff and you know and then he's had a pretty great career and yeah. you know going back to the soundness side of it or the horse you're talking about dropping in the water the other upside is he's got nearly perfect confirmation and feet right. so you know to keep his confidence up to do the job i do quite a bit of jumping during the week not necessarily big but just lots of jumping mm -hmm. rails and cavalettis and if he had was compromised in his confirmation yeah. somewhere then he probably wouldn't have held up to yeah. being able to do that um so that's definitely one that as a young horse probably until up to the day he jumped around his first five star that I was not sure would be a five like, star. What am I doing? <laughs> yeah. Like, I, mean, I still remember when we yeah. entered him at Kentucky and David's like, you're taking Patrick to Kentucky? And I was like, well, I got to shit or get off the pot. Don't yeah. I? Like, he's yeah. done everything else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he's turned out to be one of my, you know, most fun five star horses I've ever had. Mm -hmm. Um, and then one that I think of one that I thought would be incredible and just wasn't, I maybe shouldn't name, I probably shouldn't say the name of it, okay. but there is one 
and she was everything you want an event horse and you know she won all these young horse classes she was brave she was a phenomenal mover phenomenal galloper uh more scope and talent everything you wanted in a modern event horse and she had zero work ethic and right. some days she'd win mm. some days she said she didn't want to do it and she wouldn't do it and right. i mean that was one that i just tried and tried and tried and tried because mm -hmm. She was, she had everything, she had it all, yeah. she had all except wanting to do yeah. it every day. Yeah. And so that one was a very difficult one to make the call on, but it was another one that once that call was made, it was just like a huge weight off my shoulders because yeah. it was in, in my gut, I knew I was never going to change her mind. Like I'd yeah. had her enough years to know that <laughs> I wasn't going to change her mind on it. Yeah. Yeah. No, especially with mares. They're yeah, either, you know, definitely. but either sometimes works or it doesn't. I know I, um, yeah, I remember when I was working in Williams yard, we had a couple of situations. Um, cool mountain was there and he was a two star horse at the time. And anytime William would jump him at home, I mean, it took we, three of us would go out to be ring crew because he just bowled, you know, like all the fences came down. And you know, there's a, a point system over there that at some point you have to move them up. And yeah. I think he was going, Maybe it was he was had just moved to, up to intermediate, and he he would go to the horse show, and he'd always just jump just high enough at the horse shows. But it was kind of the same thing. There came a point where he needed to move up to advance, and yeah. William was like freaking out. You know, he's like, "I'm not this. I can't. I mean, I don't want to. You guys are watching this, right? <laughs> right. And uh, but I mean, that horse ended up going to the Europeans. He went yeah. to Kentucky. You know, and he just was this little. I mean, William maybe rode him once or twice a week. We hacked him yeah. out. He was the smallest horse in the barn. He had a, he looked like a hunter, like you could probably yeah. sell him as a derby horse now, but he was just the most lovely character and yeah. he knew when to show and he knew when it didn't really matter. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, but it was so, yeah, it was kind of, it was kind of wild. And, and then the other, um, thing I remember, um, you know, because over here, obviously our footing is very different. And, but sometimes there, I mean, the footing would just be like horrible. And, right. you know, William's out running the horses and, you know, again, they're going and I hadn't seen this before, but they're going cross country in open front boots or no boots. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're going intermediate. Yeah. And, you know, I asked him about it. I was like, this is kind of wild. And he said, well, they're not precious until they've gone three star. Like, yeah, and he's like, because I might as well know now. And, and yeah. he just said it just that, but he's like, I might as well yeah. know now. And it was, there was a very clear shift once they ended up going the advanced level. I mean, they all got treated incredibly well, you yes, know, but, yes. but it was not, he was not, uh, you know, it wasn't like, oh, I'm not going to run them because the ground yeah. is hard or the ground is soft and I'm not going to yeah. do all this stuff. It's just like, they, I, I'd rather know now. Um, I think that was, that's a great way, word for it is precious. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, you see it all the time over here. And I think it's, and like I had a British girl come be as a working student. And I said, you know, one thing you're going to judge us for is how much, uh, you know, kind of maintenance and time and you know, stuff we put in these horses, icing or whatever mm -hmm. else. And I said, but one thing I keep in mind is we don't, we can't find them as easily as you guys. Yeah. Right. So yeah. like we have to, if we're going to, 